Hello wonderful people, it is Genevieve and in this video we are going to learn how to paint watercolor cactus in Procreate. And if you've been around for a while you're probably like, hey I've seen this before and you would be right. I did do a tutorial about how to paint a cactus pretty much in the first couple of videos on my channel. But it was really hard to follow and I was getting a lot of questions about it and Procreate changed since then. So this is a an updated version of this tutorial which should be way way easier and just overall way better. So with that said, open up the app, create a new canvas and let's start painting. So the canvas that I will be using for this is absolutely massive. So if you want to do exactly like me, it's 5000 per 4000 pixel, which is gigantic. <laughs> and the reason I'm using this canvas is because it's part of my uh, big brush bundle and there is kind of a pre-textured file that comes with it. And so, yeah, but you can use really any size that you want to suit your needs. I would recommend at least 2000 per 2000 pixels. Once you have your canvas, go ahead and create a new layer and rename it to base. This is just a normal layer set to 100% opacity. And you need to pick the color you want for your cactus. So I'm going with just a normal green. <laughs> and I'll be using special watercolor brushes that come in the Big Brush Bundle and the Ultimate Watercolor Brushes for Procreate. But you can use in the airbrushing tool here just the um, hard brush and lower the opacity. As you can see, you're still going to get some overlay effect. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to allow you to maybe get a watercolor feel without um, purchasing anything. So once you've picked your brush, I'm going with the Dark Edges watercolor again that comes with the um, Big Brush Bundle or the Watercolor Bundle, which by the way will be linked in the description below along with a promo code just for you guys as usual. Just go ahead and draw the shape you want your cactus to be. And there are so many different types of cacti. You can just Google and see that there are a bunch of different ones. I'm going with this kind of um, prickly pear or bunny ear type of uh, a cactus here, so just a bunch of literal like paddle that kind of attached together, but you could go with like a calico or you could even just go with a sphere basically. So just experiment and lay down the basic shape and we're gonna go from there. And since we are using watercolor brushes or regular brush with lower opacity, we get these overlay areas, which I mean, don't look super good. So if you don't have the watercolor brushes, go ahead and just set your smudge tool to a soft or medium brush. Otherwise, if you have the watercolor brushes, go ahead and pick as a like as a paintbrush, not as a smudge tool, the water blender. And we're just going to blend in those edges so that they don't look as harsh, maybe. So the way to do it is you're, you're kind of doing two things here. Yes, you are blending your edges, but you're also starting to build some watercolor texture. And I mean, you're doing three things really, because you're also building some of the shadows that you're going to have on your cactus. So I quite like to blend one of the edge and one of the edges and leave the other one like really sharp because that way it kind of starts like I was saying building the shadows and it kind of shows which paddle is in front, uh, which one is behind and yeah you're just kind of building on your shape already. Make sure that you're being super loose with your blending because Again, watercolor is something that is super organic. It's going to flow and the pigments are gonna to mix together in an unexpected way. So you wanna make sure that whenever you're blending or drawing, you kind of keep that in mind. And speaking of pigment blending, we're going to add a little bit of color variation. So either keep the same brush that you've been using or select the color shifting blushes. And you're gonna switch your green to like a more bluish version of that green that might also be a little bit darker and you can play with saturation. Basically, you just want to introduce a different version of your green and you're going to use that to do two things. You're going to use that to add some shadows. So you're going to select one side of your cactus that is going to be darker than the other. And you're also going to do that to add some color variation. So you can see here the cool thing about this the color shifting blotches. Well, one of the cool things about the color shifting blotches is that within the brush, you have multiple colors, so every time the brush moves around, the color changes a little bit. And it also has uh, a little bit of a, like blending abilities, so it's going to move the colors that are around it. So it's a really cool way of adding color variation and just a whole lot of texture. But like I was saying, if you just have, you know, regular brushes from Procreate, that's fine. You can just use a soft airbrush and change your color maybe a little bit more often than what I'm doing. 
like manually going in the color picker and changing the color and that's probably still going to work. Just remember to lower the opacity of your brush so that you get some overlay effects which is really one thing that is important when you're painting watercolor. And at this point, you may or may not want to go back in with your smudge tool or your water blender. I would say if you're just drawing with regular brushes, you're definitely going to want to go back in with your smudge tool to move the pigments around. But if you're drawing with the regular like color shifting blushes, that's probably not going to be necessary. So once you have some texture and color variation that you like, go ahead and set your eraser and set it to either a soft brush or the color shifting blotches and we're going to add even more color variation and even more texture by this time erasing parts of what we've been painting so far and by doing that we're also adding some lights so kind of make sure that you're focusing most of your erasing on the opposite side of where you um, were drawing your shadows before so that's going to help add a lot of dimension to your painting to your cactus and this is starting to look pretty good if I do say so myself, but we're not going to stop there. We're going to add even more color variation. This time we're going to use the selection tool, set it to freehand, and we're going to draw a selection, believe it or not, uh, that is pretty much on the bottom part of the cactus or on the bottom part of some of the paddles so that you can add more shadows. So you can see here it's just this bottom section and then you're going to feather your selection somewhere around 30%. There's no need to be precise. Then in the adjustment panel, select Q saturation and brightness for the entire layer and you're going to be able to create your shadow that way. You just have to lower the brightness, probably up the saturation quite a lot. And you might even want to shift the hue a little bit towards the right so you get something that is a bit more blue. And as you can see, that's a really quick way of adding more curl variation. So we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to add some um, shadows on the other part of the cactus. If you have a simpler cactus, you're not going to have to do it again. But in my, in my case, it was just a bit harder to create just one selection. So I'm doing the exact same thing. So once you have your shadows, we're actually going to do the same thing again. But this time we're going to select the other side of the cactus and we're going to add some lights. So again, same thing, you just use the selection tool, set it to freehand and then draw the selection and feather your selection somewhere around 30%. And in hue, saturation, brightness, this time you're going to up the brightness, up the saturation again, and you might want to move the hue towards the left to get something that is a little bit more yellow like the sun was hitting your cactus. You can also use this technique with a totally random wobbly shape and just add some color variation, which is probably what you're going to need to do if you have just regular brushes and you don't have watercolor brushes. And you can see here, if you just play with the hue, it adds so much depth to your painting and makes it look really like watercolor because like I was saying earlier, watercolor have like it has pigments that are blending together in expected way. So that's a really nice way of kind of mimicking that effect. So at this point, you should have a really nice base, but we're missing something very important for a cactus. We're missing the spines. <laughs> so go ahead and create a new layer. And you can see here, I named it spikes. That was a mistake. So if you're me in the future, next time, name it spines, but doesn't matter. And you're going to pick white or black. That's totally up to you. As well as more of a like coloring or sketching brush so you could use just the HB or 6B pencil if you have the watercolor brushes go ahead and pick the coloring brush or coloring pencil and you're just going to draw lines of very quick not precise at all little spines the faster you are the looser you are the most it's gonna look like watercolor so you're not trying to get a perfect spine here you're really just trying to show that there are spines basically and depending on the type of cactus that you're drawing, the, the spines themselves might be kind of arranged in different type of patterns. So if you want to be botanically accurate, make sure that you Google the type of cactus that you're drawing beforehand. Otherwise, just, you know, <laughs> draw what looks good to you. And that's totally fine as well. If you want to add some flowers, it's really easy. Just go ahead and create a new layer, name it flowers. And that step is totally optional. So if you don't want to draw flowers, just skip to the next one. I will add the timestamp right now. Otherwise, go ahead and pick the color you want for your flowers. There are so many different options. I feel like a nice little peachy green, green, what I mean, <laughs> peachy pink looks really good. And you're just going to go back to the same brush that you use for your cactus space. So in my case, it was the Dark Edges watercolor. And for the flowers, you can pretty much do just little blobs that you overlay 
and that's gonna look good because you don't want the focus to be on the flowers you don't want the flowers to be too detailed you really want the focus to be on the cactus so basically the flowers in this case are more just to add a little like touch of color so as you can see I'm being super quick super loose and it looks good <laughs> you can even go ahead and make it even looser by using the water drag brush or again the smudge tool and just going over and making it feel basically like you dropped a drop of water on top of your watercolor and it just kind of bled right into the paper. Another step that can be really cool is to add some splatters. So again, this is optional, just like the flowers. If you do want to do it, go ahead and create a new layer, rename it to splatters. And this one, we're going to change the blending mode. And to do that, all you have to do is click on the little N here and select linear burn. That's it. And then you're going to go back to a green that you use in your cactus and with the splatter brush that comes with again the watercolor brushes you're just going to add some splatters all around there aren't really any equivalent brush that come with procreate to my knowledge so I, I'm, I'm sorry about that but you could even go around and just you know draw splatters individually by yourself by hand and that wouldn't take too long so that would be an option if you don't have the brush bundle at this point, this is where we're going to add a pot, which is really, really fun because there are so many little techniques that we can use to decorate it. So start by creating a new layer, name it pot and leave it like a normal 100% and you're going to pick the color you want. I'm going with a like a brown for a normal terracotta, but you could go with any color of your choice. And you're going to pick the same brush that you used for your cactus and your flowers if you had some flowers and you're going to really roughly outline and fill in the color or I should say the shape of your pot and when I say really roughly it's because we're gonna be able to tweak it later so don't don't worry too much about it and don't worry also about the overlay of the cactus in the pot we're also going to fix that later if you want to add some dimension to your pot that is the time to do it with the same brush that you've been using the same color you're just going to kind of um, either add some sort of a like a side to it or what is it called like a, a ledge I guess and this is also how you would add your shadow on the one of sides we don't we're not really gonna bother with like, changing the brush for this we're just gonna kind of draw a shadow and then we're gonna come in with either the smudge tool or the water blender depending on what you have available and we're just going to blend those hard edges and if your pot is a bit too transparent like mine, you can just duplicate your layer by swiping it towards the left and then you can change the opacity of the top one and just merge them when you're happy. You can also play with the shape with this tool called Liquify, set it to push. And this Liquify tool is in the adjustment panel. And what you can do with it is really cool. You can just move the color around. So that's super helpful when you have a shape that you like the general idea of, but you want to kind of tweak it a little bit. So you don't want to take this spot and make it like shaped like a, like a horse or a dog or something completely different. That wouldn't work because it would stretch your pixels and that would look really, really um, low quality in the end. But if you're just kind of reshaping your pot a little bit, that's a really great way to do it because you don't have to redraw everything you can just use this really cool tool again it's called liquify and it is in the adjustment panel and you can also add some color variation to the pot with the same technique we use for the cactus so the selection tool set to freehand that you then feather around 30 percent and then using the hue saturation and brightness tool in the adjustment panel you can just kind of add a little bit of something different in the pot i usually don't really bother but if, if you're a perfectionist, <laughs> you definitely can do that. And at this point, we still have this weird cactus pot overlay that we definitely need to fix. So go ahead and on the base layer, double tap on it and then select mask. And with your eraser set to like a normal brush, I quite like the dry ink brush that comes with Procreate. You can go over and just erase the overlay part of the cactus, making sure you are on the mask. And the reason we create a mask is if you make a mistake, you're not kind of losing the cactus. You can always bring it back by using a paintbrush. Again, I'm using dry ink, but setting this paintbrush to white. So basically masks, I'm probably going to do a video at one point explaining how masks work, but it's kind of saving you the trouble of having to redraw something. And you can use the same mask technique on the pot with the eraser, just using it to add some little decorations, which is a really nice way of making your piece a little bit more detailed, but a little bit more interesting and personalized. You can also use the selection uh, technique to kind of 
pretend that your cactus pot is dipped into paint or has a really cool pattern on it. So make sure you have the actual layer selected and not the layer mask. And with your selection tool, you can draw whichever shape that you want. And this time you're going to feather it only around 3 or 4%, not more than that. And you can play and like lower the brightness or up the brightness quite a lot or change the color. And it kind of looks like you dip your pot in paint or something, which I think is really, really cool. So anyway, you can definitely play with those two techniques to decorate your pot and get a really cool final result. So there you go. This was how to paint a watercolor cactus in Procreate. If you want to check out the brushes that I use, it will be linked in the description below along with our promo code. And I would love to see what you guys create. So make sure to share the results with me either on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos every single week.